Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome for a second time a very senior and accomplished leader from USA, Mr. Joe Thornton. Joe, welcome to the show. Good morning, Ashutosh. Thank you. Uh, Joe is the Chief Executive Officer of Scooters Coffee and Visionary Brands. And he was just telling me that they are now spreading very aggressively all over USA. But today our con conversation is going to be about Joe's new book, The Depths of Mediocrity, Eliminating Indifference. So, Joe, let's start st straight away about your book, The Depths of Mediocrity, Eliminating Indifference. And I'm going to ask all my viewers and listeners to go and check out Mr. Joe Thornton's book. Your title is very provocative. Tell me what inspired you to write the book. Yeah, uh, Shatash, there's a few things. The, the first is um, our kids are watching, you know, and I think, uh, you know, our the generations that are growing up now have seen a lack of leadership. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we ignore causation Perhaps the recent generations are filled with anxiety and depression and PTSD and mm -hmm. even a dose of hopelessness because of our lack of courage to lead. So that uh, was a compelling uh, reason behind the title and writing the book. The second is, you know, we've just uh, survived a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe the pandemic exposed and perhaps even amplified our collective lack of leadership. And in some cases, that one's a simple one to look at. We failed the basic tenets mm. of putting on a mask, washing our hands and getting vaccinated. Right. <laughs> um, and then I think third, you know, often when businesses are not successful, we often look at external factors, uh, market, industry, competition, and frankly, usually the issue is internal and sometimes right in the mirror. Mm. Fascinating, fascinating. You also argue that the opposite of excellence is not failure, but mediocrity. Can you talk a little bit more about this? Yeah, you know, failure many times is representative of growth. Uh, even making mistakes usually advances the thing that you're working on in some way, shape, or form. However, mediocrity is generally laziness. Um, you know, effort should always be rewarded. So therefore, failure can have a place in the work that we do. Uh, there's actually a chapter called The Blame Game where I go into detail of what that looks like and you know right. the impact on our world. But mediocrity is an output of a, generally a lack of effort. And that, that I think always needs to be called out in, in uh, the setting that we're in. Hmm. And uh, for my viewers and listeners, could you share an experience, a personal experience where you encountered mediocrity and how you addressed it or handled it? Yeah, I think the word first kind of rose to the top for me many years ago. I was working for a leader. I was, I think, in my first vice president job. And hmm. um, and whatever you could define as mediocre, he was representing it. You know, almost anything you could do wrong as a leader, he did it. And the most important takeaway, he was aware it was just a lack of care. Hmm. Uh, but I almost couldn't fault him because he'd never been accountable to that behavior. So he continued. He was rewarded for it and promoted for it over time. Hmm. Um, the irony, though, years later, uh, he would ask me for a job in a different organization. Hmm. But back to your question, eventually I confronted this person about it. Hmm. Um, it did lead me to transferring to another role in the company. But I felt uh, compelled to not walk by things that are not correct. And that was one of those that because it affected my day-to-day -day work, I, I, I addressed it. Hmm. Well said. And uh, Joe, what are some of the common misconceptions about mediocrity and, and indifference that you aim to correct or address in your book? Hmm. Yeah, one is that, you know, that medioc mediocrity doesn't matter, that doing enough just to get by is acceptable. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting word, and I chose this word intentionally in the title because it evokes a feeling of being inadequate, but it can also make you feel compelled to take the hill, to do something about a situation, that it can be such an infuriating word if someone attaches that to you. Right. So it's odd to have a word strike both disappointment and inspiration simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, I think a uh, misconception about indifference is... Um, 
is that people know what to do and they simply choose not to. It, it really is a lack of care. And I think that's important to call out. Uh, but there's another piece of indifference that's really important that I dial into during the in the book mm -hmm. is that indifference is an ethical and moral ability to look away, do nothing and be OK with it. Mm -hmm. And so everyone has a different moral compass. But what I'm really calling out in the book is when you're in a leadership role, you have a responsibility to a moral compass that's mostly representative and protective of the people that you're leading. Mm -hmm. Well said. Moving on, you know, how does the concept of I didn't know uh, relate mm -hmm. to the perpetuation of mediocrity and indifference? Yeah, as I think back over the past few years, as I started to, to pin uh, the framework of this book, I would hear people talk about and mostly related to social issues, whether it was, uh, you know, things that happened in 2020, racial issues in the U.S., or even things related to the pandemic or crime and injustice in general, police mm -hmm. brutality of spouses. I mean, there's a whole, whole list yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. And I'd hear people engage in conversation. And it seemed like when it would get uncomfortable, people would say, well, I didn't know that that was true. And sometimes the point here is that sometimes I didn't know has nefarious intentions. Mm -hmm. um, because in the world that we in live in, it's hard when people say, well, I didn't see that or I didn't hear that because we're bombarded with so much information even if right. you don't watch network tv it's on your phone if it's not your phone it's another uh medium in which we get information mm -hmm. so it's hard to not know it's hard mm -hmm. to not be aware of the world around you um so i don't assume that with every situation it's just getting tougher to to use that as an out when right. it comes to solving problems mm -hmm. and joe you know i'm sure this has given your amazing corporate and professional background, you advocate for overachieving. How can striving for more than what's expected drive success? Well, there's a part of this, you know, it's about being thoughtful. Mm. And when I see people make decisions that are well thought out and their considerations for people involved in that decision there's just a different reaction to those that you lead. You know, well thought out decisions anticipate, they consider all stakeholders. And, you know, often the only time people are called overachievers are people who are underachieving. Mm. And so I just think it's important to use that as it's a word that's uh, it's sometimes people will weaponize it, but it's actually a very powerful and positive word. I actually go into an example in the book of um, an, a former NFL quarterback, Tony Romo, who, um, you know, was uh, not drafted, uh, ended up in the NFL, played over a decade and quarterback the Dallas Cowboys. And so often there was this focus on what he didn't achieve because he didn't get the team to the Super Bowl and, and win it all. And yet look at where he came from, the things that he had to overcome to even get to that position. Right. So I don't think he was an underachiever. I think he was an overachiever. Mm. So sometimes we, we have to understand the definition of the word as well. Mm. Well said. The other thing that I've often heard uh, as a young manager, I used to hear my bosses tell me, and you refer to it also, going the extra mile um, or doing something which is above and beyond the call of duty. I'd love to get your perspective as a leader. What does going the extra mile mean to you? And why is it essential? Yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult to define because it doesn't have an actual metric to it, but it is essentially doing more than what you plan to do or what more than everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. But it's going that extra mile and what it typically ends up meaning is that it gets you closer to greatness than mm -hmm. almost anything else you can do. Yeah. Never can guarantee success, but I do believe your odds shoot way up. And sometimes it's just important because people recognize that effort. And again, as a leader, when the team sees that you're advocating on their behalf and driving for results or driving for success, it simply inspires them to do more of that themselves. So mm -hmm. Uh, there's a real context around it when you're in a leadership role, but even for your personal life, you know, it's that extra, you know, workout or the things that you know that you're, you want to focus on and just how do you push yourself just a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And for my viewers and you know, listeners, would you have an anecdote or a story from your own journey 
where you have gone the extra mile? Yeah, I would say even in my personal life, um, you know, one of the things I write about in the book is called the 50% rule. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've heard others, I've been married now 29 years, but I hear people talk about, especially young in marriage and, and particularly becoming parents for the first time, this 50% rule of it's your turn, you know, quote unquote, your yeah. turn to yeah. change the baby or to, you mm -hmm. know, to, to handle all of these responsibilities. And what I talk about is that it's very difficult to get 50% on something basic, like pouring water evenly into two cups. <laughs> but when you talk about life behavior and relationships, um, there's going to be moments where one person can't satisfy their 50%. So if the other person decides I'm not going to go beyond my 50%, well, there's a gap and usually bad things happen. Mm -hmm. And that's the learning lesson for me, of course, becoming a husband and becoming a parent. And, you know, when you have sickness or things in the relationship, the other person has to step forward. Mm -hmm. That too can be true of the business environment mm -hmm. uh, and work that's being done. And sometimes you may have to do more than what the job description recall calls mm -hmm. for, or even what your leadership role calls for. But in the end, I believe it makes a difference because then you're building relationships with those who at some point may reciprocate that in the future. Great example. Thank you. You also talk, Joe, about exploring the power of kindness. How can kindness transform leadership and organizational culture? Kindness is one of the most important things that I talk about regularly with, with teams, current and past. And in particular, we're in this moment where there's so much focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, ESG, and other kind of models, programmatic approaches that every company should have. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being a lot of work. The question is, are you accomplishing what you set out to accomplish, mm -hmm. which is for people to have a kind and understanding heart not just to be tolerant of others, but truly being accepting. And it's easier when you simply find people who are kind mm -hmm. versus trying to legislate kindness. Yeah. So I think it's powerful in ways that sometimes people underestimate. Uh, just from a brand perspective, you want to be accessible and and uh, that people feel like they can be a part of your, your culture as a customer and certainly as an employee. But it's more than that. It really is about those moments where... Uh, everyone has an opinion about the things they feel strong about, but I just feel like kindness bonds us all. And I, I believe it's overarching for all the things that organizations are setting up in terms of uh, structure and culture. Great response. You know, your extensive leadership experience spans over four decades. How has your definition of effect effective leadership evolved over time? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, Here's what I would tell you. It actually hasn't evolved. Uh -huh. uh, I remember very, very early in my career um, reading a couple of leadership books and I took away elements from each of them and mm -hmm. formed a leadership definition because everyone has a different one. But for me, it was leadership was four things. Using inspiration to create vision that generates action and produces results. Mm -hmm. And often one of those elements is missing. It doesn't mean you won't have effective leadership. You just don't, you won't have the top level leadership results that you're looking for. But really the, the basic tenet of all of that was the first part, inspiration. I truly believe the number one role of the leader is to inspire. As you move up through an organization, your technical skills become less relevant because you're hiring people with technical skills, mm -hmm. but inspiring them to lead others and to do their work okay. is the important part. So it really hasn't changed, but I've realized that each element becomes important or changes the importance as I go through and, and elevate it to new roles. Mm -hmm. Well said. And uh, Joe, how would you suggest leaders and individuals begin the process of eliminating indifference in their spheres of influence? Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple things. One is do things that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, if if you're not passionate about it, it's there's a greater risk of indifference creeping in that you just again you go through the motions. You do just enough to get by, mm -hmm. uh, and that and people will see that, and therefore it has impacts on others around you. 
Um, and that's not just always in the job that you have. It's in the relationships you have, personal, mm-hmm. family, friends. Uh, it's in the things you decide to do uh, when you're not working. But do things that you feel passionate about. That will drive out indifference faster than anything else in your life. Mm-hmm. But I also think there's an implication on the work side, which is not walking by uh, things that need to be corrected, having the courage to say something. And sometimes it's protecting others who don't have mm. the courage or the voice. And I always talk about positional power mm. and using that for good. So when you're giving greater responsibility, don't shrink in the role, you should expand and you should mm. use that to help change the environment and, and truly drive out indifference. Mm. Well said. Time for three more questions. Your next the next question for you is you stress the importance of paying attention to detail. How can small details make a big difference in combating mediocrity? And you've been a retailer for a long time, and they've often said retail is detail. Yeah, I worked with a couple of leaders who ultimately became mentors for me years ago, and this was the towering strength of each of them was paying attention to detail. The one thing that it revealed early on for me is just the power of other people knowing that you know, whether it's recognizing a a great audit score or customer service score in a store uh, halfway across the country, just sending a note or making a call and them knowing that you know is so powerful. Hmm. But also think um, it shows up in the way that we think about people's personal development. You know, thinking about a step ahead, if if this person has an aspiration to grow, are we helping them? Are we thinking about executive coaches or mentors? Or uh, when we see a development opportunity, are we really calling that out? Because if we don't, they may continue down that path of behavior that needed to be corrected and no one else is there to do it. And Mm -hmm. there's a part of all of this, which is Um, We often talk about things like taking the high road or this too shall pass or someone else will address these things. And maybe that someone else is us. And paying attention to detail is such a critical part of particularly leadership as you expand into greater roles. Mm. Well said. Can you also talk about a time when going the extra mile made a significant difference in your professional or personal life? Yeah, there are plenty of moments, uh, but one was uh, a role it took. um, It was my first vice president job, and um, the CEO of the company was coming to town to visit uh, on short notice. They told me they'd be there the next day, but I'd always prepared myself, um, not just in presentation, but in, you know, how do I want to be thoughtful about this connection, Mm -hmm. no matter which brand I was working at, but it was really an example of me preparing ahead of time, thinking about all the things that were important for me and my development, but also for the business that I was operating and ultimately um, had a great connection. And it it was a springboard to my career in a way that I couldn't have really anticipated at that moment. Uh, But I always remembered that, uh, the the importance of preparation. uh, And in that case, that that was uh, going an extra mile moment that paid a difference uh, and made a difference in my career. Well said. So I'm going to add one more question. So I've got two more questions for you. Uh, When I was reading the press release at the time when your book was released, the press release mentions the book's book's focus on fracturing of society's moral fabric. Can you give me an example of how mediocrity contributes to this? Yeah, you know, it's uh, when you describe it that way, it sounds so heavy, the book does. Uh, And there are some elements of it. You know, one of the tenets of the book is that I want people to feel compelled to act Mm -hmm. in whatever way that is, in whatever part of society, in whatever part of their life. But uh, to your question, it's the impact on our children. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a lack of willingness to discuss and solve the really difficult problems are what gets us in trouble. Things like child sex trafficking. You know, it's no one really wants to talk about that That is a very difficult topic. And yet, if you don't talk about it, there's absolutely no chance to to actually solve it. And so it's really that level of engagement that I think we all can turn the dial just a little bit more. And and the impact, again, on our children, I do believe the number one responsibility of a parent is to do no harm to their children and not allow anyone else to do harm to them either. 
because so many of our societal challenges are generational. Mm -hmm. It's things that happened before that now start to manifest in the next generation. And we have to be able to tie that together and, and start to solve problems. Great response. And my last question to you, Joe, what is the one takeaway from your book that you want all readers to think about? Yeah, well, I, I, for one, I want them to feel something, you know, from reading the book, whether it's the storytelling or whether it's uh, the topics that are brought up that, you know, I don't uh, present a position on these topics. It's simply to say, how do we yeah. all think about a role and and that we play? So it really is at the end of the day, it's this compelling feeling as you read and take away from the book to to act mm -hmm. and to to do something that will change the trajectory of any one of a number mm -hmm. of topics um, that are in the book, uh, but also want people to feel uplifted by reading the book. There's, again, lots of storytelling that should inspire people. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's always better uh, if we want to change the world. Well said. And on that note, Joe, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me about your book, The Depths of Mediocrity, Eliminating Indifference. I think you covered incredible amount of ground in your book and of course in a con conversation about mediocrity and indifference. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.